Hello friends, welcome back. Today I have another case that brings us right back to my backyard in Las Vegas. It came up on my newsfeed. The headline that I saw said a woman got arrested and she was claiming she was being arrested because she was too good looking. And I was like, oh my God, this is hysterical. But as I read further, it said the woman who got arrested and claimed that she was too good looking was being accused of killing her mother. So not, not funny at all. But let me tell you the background story. This is about a 28 year old woman who lived with her mother in Las Vegas. Back in June, she was at the Harry Reid International Airport, which I only know because I live here and Adam told me and I'm like, what? Because we had to put it in the GPS one time. Used to be called McCarran Airport and they recently changed the name of the airport to Harry Reid International Airport. I don't know why, it's a little confusing. Ms. Bustami was at the Chili's Tex-Mex outpost at the Harry Reid International Airport and she left without paying her bill. Do you still say Dine and Dash nowadays? Cause that's what we used to say when I was like, I don't know, eighth grade, ninth grade, high school. Skip that on the check, however you wanna say it. Chili's workers called security. They find her at the security check-in point and she's telling everyone, I'm sorry, I'm laughing, it's not funny, but she's telling everyone that she is a hospitality professional and they're doing it all wrong and they need to follow her. Of course, any civilian who claims that she is a security professional or a hospitality professional is messing up what they're trying to do. People are getting annoyed. The people that are working there are getting extra annoyed because they can't do their jobs. People are getting upset. They're delayed. You know how it is. So the cops find her and she's like, oh, here we go again. You're just picking on me because you've just never seen anybody so good looking. I'm way too good looking. And they ran her ID and they see that she has a warrant for something that happened a couple months ago or last year in municipal court. In one outlet I saw they had no idea what it was for, but then another one said it was for battery. But either way, they have grounds to arrest her because she has a warrant. So as they're arresting her, she starts threatening that she's gonna spit on all of these cops. She starts calling them perverts. And she says, because they've never seen anybody as good looking as her, that they were all pervs because they were looking at her funny and they were trying to R, R her. She was extremely belligerent. The cops in their report said that she appeared to be intoxicated. And I'll share my thoughts on that in a minute. If I had one ounce of this woman's self-confidence, I mean, granted, to me, it sounds like some sort of substance misuse disorder mixed with serious mental health issues. But if I just took steps out of my shoes and like just that, minus all of the other stuff, especially postpartum, my God, I'd be in a much better position in life as we all would. But let's keep going with the story. They had grounds to arrest her and they booked her on misconduct charges for that, for the Chili's incident at the airport. But now this woman has way bigger legal issues. On Wednesday, October 26, 2022, she's believed to have called police in the middle of the night. So at 2.30 in the morning, she calls Las Vegas police and she's like, I think my mother's dead. As the dispatcher starts asking questions, she hangs up, click, done, disconnects the call. Police were dispatched to the residence on June Flower Lane. I believe it was June Flower and Jones. I doubt you care unless you live here. But they found a 62 year old woman who had multiple deep lacerations from a piece of broken glass and she was pronounced dead on the scene. They said that there was tons of blood. It was a pretty brutal and gruesome scene. When the officers got to June Flower Drive, they found 62 year old woman dead. Officers say she had deep lacerations and that there was a lot of blood at the scene. Homicide detectives were able to quickly determine that this victim had been involved in a brutal dispute with her daughter. Later, the daughter was identified as 28 year old Hend Bustami, the self-professed beauty queen who claimed she was too good looking and that's why she was being arrested back at the airport in June. On October 26th at around 5.30 a.m., Highway Patrol near Barstow, California stopped Hend Bustami and she was arrested. And what's really sad and crazy about the story is when she was arrested, she broke down and she said, I think I killed my mommy. So to me, that just shows major ups and downs and mental health issues that this girl was suffering from. Neighbors said that it wasn't uncommon to hear all kinds of noise and fighting coming from the house. One neighbor said that they knew once the sun went down, they were gonna hear fighting all night long between the mother and the daughter. 
Another neighbor said that this wasn't the first time that police were called to the Bustami household. It appeared one day, allegedly, that Hend had started a fire. Firefighters responded to the scene, but also police did, and he recalls seeing Hend standing at the end of the driveway in handcuffs. As neighbors so started to hear the news, some tell me they were shocked, but that this was not the first time police were here. She was in handcuffs uh, in front of the house. Uh, fire trucks came. Um, I'm guessing she, she started a fire. A different neighbor said on a few occasions, he'd see her standing at the end of the driveway, spinning around in circles, just being kind of flighty and strange and exhibiting this abnormal behavior. She is expected to be extradited back to Nevada and charged with open murder. I did a little further research as much as I could into Hend Bustami, and I found that she had this YouTube channel just under her name if you wanna look. She has 10 videos posted. A couple of her with DJs, a couple of her, I think she's DJing. And then there's a whole bunch of Aphrodite. It's what she called herself, A-F-R-O-D-Y-T-E. And then she has one at Seven Magic Mountains, which apparently is beautiful. I believe that's near the Valley of Fire. On this YouTube channel, she has 10 videos. And some were, what stood out to me the most was there were a couple of videos of her dancing, right? And the dancing that she was doing was kind kind of like frolicking type of dancing. I think that's what you call it. I know that from the Jersey Shore. Techno club, like um, Dead Mouse, right? When like people go to Dead Mouse and is Dead Mouse still even a thing? The frolic type of dancing, right? And it's like this house or electronic music. It reminded me of this story and I don't know if this is correlated in any way. It reminded me of a situation and I don't know if this is the case with her. It's just me speculating based off of that YouTube channel, based off of her behaviors, where my sister had a really good friend who was like really into Dead Mouse and all of that really like techno deep house underground house type of music and that that vibe right and he did a ton of acid and molly and he would mix it all the time there might have been other things that he was doing but those are the two things that definitely come to mind and he did so much it started to mess with his brain right he started to go into this drug induced psychosis his roommates found him in his room. He hadn't been out of his room for like two days. He had written all over the walls in Sharpie, like literally there was not an inch of the wall that wasn't covered. They tried to get him help. They tried to get him to stop, called his parents. A couple weeks later, they find him on the beach with a stack of books, walking down the shoreline, just reciting weird lines of what he, I guess, thought was poetry, but it was like gibberish, it made no sense, and he was talking about saving the world and this and that. This seems, in my opinion, very similar, that she's going through some sort of mental health break, a psychosis issue. I think it's, in my opinion, this is just in my opinion, this is just based off of the minimal stuff that I've seen, that I think that she definitely has severe psychosis, mental health issues, because of the YouTube stuff and what I saw, saw with her being like into the DJ scene and the house scene and the underground house scene. And also the cops said that she appeared to be intoxicated. It might be a combo of the two. I could be wrong, but that's my opinion. Anyway, what a really sad case. As the case develops, as I hear more, I could keep you guys posted. Just a sad, sad situation. Okay, I will be back with more for you guys. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this case. If you guys have other cases you want me to cover, totally cool. I'll do that for you or anything you want me to know. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Mwah.